So let's look at classifying ecosystems. The syllabus objectives, there's several here. First of all, you need to understand that ecosystems are composed of various habitats. And they introduce a couple of terms here, microhabitat, ecoregion, and things in between. Uh, you need to be able to interpret data to classify and name an ecosystem. And you need to explain how the process of classifying ecosystems is an important step towards effective ecosystem management. First of all, let's have a look at this terminology then. So what's a microhabitat? Now remember, habitat is where organisms live. So a microhabitat is a very small habitat or a part of a habitat which supports the survival of, of small organisms. So it might be a rock pool, a rotting log, that sort of thing. So this syllabus objective is really talking about um, understanding that ecosystems are composed of lots of different micro parts, so like micro habitats within a habitat, all the way through to ecosystems and then ecoregions. So let's have a look at what an ecoregion is. So this is much, much larger scale. It's basically it's a pattern of ecosystems that have the same sort of soil and land form. So here, for example, is the Amazon rainforest. So it's um, basically got the same sort of pattern. It's a collection of ecosystems across a large geographic region. So it's called an ecoregion. So basically, what does that mean? It's an area with similar ecosystems. So if we can have a look at this from a hierarchy point of view, we start with our microhabitats within our habitat, and then of course our ecosystem, ecoregion we just mentioned, and then biome, which I'm gonna to talk to you about in a second. But I just wanna remind you that a habitat is basically where organisms live, and the ecosystem is, inter is interested in both the living and non-living aspects of an ecosystem. So they're really not the same thing, but you could probably organize them hierarchically in that you have habitats within ecosystems and you have microhabitats within habitats. So what's a biome then? A biome is a major ecological community of organisms. So remember, a community is all of the organisms of different species. So it's a major ecological community of organisms that are adapted to a particular climactic and environmental condition on a large geographical area. So what is it about the biome? It's determined by the climate and the environmental conditions. And the organisms that live there, live there because they're adapted to those conditions. We can basically, there's some variation in terms of what the biomes are, but we can basically divide them up into land and water or terrestrial and aquatic. Terrestrial biomes are thinking really broadly, forests, desert, grasslands, and then tundra and aquatic biomes, marine and freshwater. So that was the first syllabus objective. The next one is uh, ways in which we can classify ecosystems. And this can be done based on a several different systems. We're gonna look at some of these. In um, my next video, I'm gonna talk more specifically about SPECT's classification system. First of all, we've got hydrages, life zones. Now, so if you have a look and these colored shapes here, they're basically describing biomes or um, life zones, if you like. So we've got desert, tundra, scrub, forest, so they're a bit more specific than biomes, but you know, they're still really, um, uh, really vast, really large. Now, the whole idea with the whole of life zone system is that you can use several factors to determine what the ecosystem is or you know what the life zone is so for example if it's a subpolar region we go across here and it needs to be one of these okay if it's a subpolar um eco uh subpolar region with an evapora potential evapotranspiration ratio of um 0.6 for example, then it must be moist tundra because that's where these two join. Okay, 0.6 we run down here and you see it's one of these and we already said it was subpolar so it's one of these so it must be moist tundra. 
And we can do that with any of these, and we can look at it in terms of precipitation, um, its altitude, its bio-temperature, its humidity, and its latitudinal regions as well. So let's do one more. Let's say it's, um, it's got a annual precipitation of 1500 millimeters, and it is in a boreal latitudinal regional. Okay, so 1500 millimeters, one of these down here, and it's boreal, so it's a rainforest. Okay, it's really as simple as that. Now, the other thing that's interesting you could do is if we know it's a rainforest, well, we can work out that it's also super humid, it's subalpine, and um, it has a potential evapotranspiration ratio of, of, of this area here. So that's the Holdridge's life zone system. So another one is the ANAE, which is the Australian National Aquatic Ecosystem Classification. And this is, of course, is about classifying aquatic ecosystems. Now we don't really, uh, have not ever seen one of these in a, a data test or an, um, an external exam. But just to be aware, it's another system. So why do we classify ecosystems? Well, the first reason is to protect them. Another is to be able to provide a way of monitoring and reporting on the ecosystem. So particularly about the health of the ecosystem, monitoring if there's any change to the health of the ecosystem. Uh, it might be about petitioning of resources. So for example, classic would be uh, water running down a river, say the, the Murray River or something. Uh, and uh, there needs to be determination about how much water can be taken out by farmers along the way. So understanding the ecosystems, understanding the requirements of those ecosystems, um, understanding the health of the ecosystems would be really important. Uh, it helps us to be able to describe the requirements that species have, particularly species that might be in danger, to understand the ecosystem, and also to be able to just to, to learn more about the habitats within an ecosystem. So these are some. But the specific syllabus objective asks you to explain how the process of classifying ecosystems is an important step towards effective ecosystem management. Because this is actually a question that we often find in, um, in exams. The question might be explain two ways that classifying ecosystems allows for effective management of old growth forests. Now in here, I talk about classification allows us to document, monitor and communicate information about biodiversity which can be used to monitor how old growth forests recover after a disturbance. So we could consider that a human disturbance or it could be, you know, some sort of natural disaster or something. But here, the first one here is about understanding biodiversity to monitor recovery. Okay, so the first one is about monitoring recovery. And the second one can uh, to identify which parts of an area have similar species composition and abiotic factors. This data can be used to inform effective management as similar management principles would be able, would apply to old growth forests with similar species composition. Basically, I think this one is saying that we can study uh, an ecosystem that has been managed and use that information to be able to manage other ecosystems of the like. Now, um, in terms of marking, it just says explain one way and then a second way. So. As long as you select an answer that is ecologically valid or biologically valid, then you're going to get the marks for it. Okay, so that's that's the end of this one, and I'm going to talk about specs classification in the next video.